Hi, I'm Stick Mittens, and welcome to Rebel Imperium. You may have seen me around Rebel and the related leagues for a while as a generally mediocre coach, streamer, and caster of Rebel games, including several of the side leagues and as many of the one-day tournaments as I can manage to be awake for. I'd like to think I'm known as a coach that values the fun and silliness of Blood Bowl, and it's hard to find a better example of that in my mind than Rebel Imperium. Needless to say, uh, I'm a big fan. So, what is Imperium? Rebel Imperium is a take on custom mixed teams in Blood Bowl 2, played in the Blood Bowl 2 client with some outside help from a website and Discord bot to take care of all the management stuff. Note that since we're playing mixed slash custom teams, you do need the legendary edition of the game to participate, such that you can use said features. Uh, however, there is a fun little twist. This is all based on collectible cards. There are a set number of defined mixed teams in the Blood Bowl 2 client. Here's a sheet with a relatively easy to digest breakdown. They're fun to play with, but there are so many options, it's often hard to have a good competition with the mixed teams. We try to make the mixed teams more of a choice. Rather than just picking and choosing the best from each race, we make you build your team, or deck, from a set of cards you own. You gain more cards by playing more games and earning Imperium coins, which can be spent on card packs. Don't worry, there's no money here. All the coins are magic internet points that we earn just through playing Blood Bowl games. I hope I've convinced you to play Rebel Imperium. Let's get started. The first thing to do is we need to start in the Imperium Discord. There's a handy invite link in the description. And uh, here we are. So this is the Rebel Imperium Discord. This is where most of your daily interaction with Rebel Imperium is going to occur. There's also a website, which we'll check out later. But there, there are many channels here. For the most part, you can ignore a lot of them to start with. There's a few that are worth pointing out. We have the general chat channel, where people often just talk about Imperium. We have a pack shop channel, where you'll do most of your purchasing packs with your earned Imperium gold. Uh, bank notifications is where the bot will tell you when you've earned gold. And then most of the other ones are related to the specific tournaments that you will enter. So feel free to not pay attention to those for now. What we do need to do is create a coach. So we're going to go to our new coaches channel up here in Rebel Imperium, go down to the message box and type the new coach command. This is linked to your Discord account. So use the Discord account that you are using for your standard Rebel Blood Bowl times. We'll just do new coach and hit enter here. Note that I have made a Smurf account for the purposes of illustrating this. This this account will not exist post creation of this video, but I would like to have a fresh account to uh, to show everybody how it works. So we've had our account created. Imperium Bot has let us know that our account has been created. We have a bank of ten Imperium coins initially, and a handy dandy link to the rules. They're probably a little overwhelming at the start, but it's important that you read them. Feel free to pause and go check them out now, or read them after the video is over. I'll put a link in the description. I understand it's a lot, but trust me, get through the first tournament and then the rest of them will all be more of the same. Most of the rules are just about how Imperium works with the deck building rules and all that sort of thing. But one thing I would like to stress is that we follow the same code of conduct and player behavior rules as Rebel, because this is Rebel Imperium after all. So if you're familiar with those, there should be nothing too new and exciting there. The next step is to go and uh, get some cards. We have 10 coins, but we have no cards. What do we do with those coins? As of Season 4, you start with 10 gold and 2 free player packs. There are two main pack types you can buy, Booster Budget and Booster Premium. Premium is more expensive, but has a better chance to contain better cards. For now, you only have enough to buy one booster pack anyway, so that makes the decision easy. Player packs will only give you players for the particular mixed team you generate the pack for. Alliance of Goodness, Far East Association, Union of Small People, etc. If you already know what mixed team to start with, great, generate those packs. If you're more like me and aren't sure yet, let's start with the booster pack and see if we get any ideas. So we're going to head over to the pack shop in the Imperium store here. Click on pack shop. We can scroll down, see all these people generating their fun little packs. We need to find our chat window at the bottom. The command to generate the basic pack that we're starting with is the booster budget pack is exclamation point gen pack booster. Nice and simple. So all we have to do is go here, press enter, and we should get our first set of cards. Bam. 
what have we started with? Well, we've opened three rare cards and two commons. We've opened a Dark Elf Witch Elf, an Elf Turf Sale, which is a special play card. You can note at the bottom of the pack, it tells you a little bit more about some of the cards that are not obvious. So in this case, the tournament organizers have been offered a discount deal on Elf Turf. Every team in the tournament must equip an Elf Turf Stadium Enhancement. Other stadium enhancement cards are ignored and cannot be replaced. This is a special play card, and they can offer you some deck building or team building options that you can't get elsewhere, and you can often do things to manipulate the tournament that you're playing in, such as changing the stadium types, for example. And they're a fun way to play around with strategies. We also have a sidestep halfling, a training card that can give fend to one of our players, as well as a Norse thrower. The Dark Elf Witch Elf is probably the most exciting card in there, so maybe we should focus on a team that has access to Dark Elves. That leaves us with two options, the Elfic Grand Coalition or the Chaotic Player Pact. And uh, the Norse Thrower doesn't help us and the Halfling doesn't help us in either one of those cases, so let's just pick the Chaotic Player Pact for now. Maybe you have a team that you're more interested in playing and you can pick a team that you'd like to play. If you're dead set on playing a particular team, you can always just ignore what you open in the budget pack and pick up the player pack of your choice. However, if you are pretty indifferent, you can get some ideas from the booster budget pack, and that's what I went for. So let's generate some players. So gen pack player CPP. CPP standing for chaotic player pack. If you just type in exclamation mark gen pack, you will see a whole list of all the commands available and all of the abbreviations for the different mixed teams. You are given two free player packs at the start of a season to get yourself a nice little boost. However, it is possible to earn them throughout the season as well. You cannot purchase them with gold, but there is a way to get them that I will go over later. So for now, let's generate our first player pack, see what we get. Ooh, a second witch elf, an epic. We've opened a mighty blow dark elf witch, so that is a witch elf starting with mighty blow, which is certainly a useful card. We've also gained two nice positionals in an Underworld Skaven Blitzer and an Underworld Skaven Thrower, so things are already looking pretty good for our first deck. Since we get two, let's try a second. Slightly less good this time, no epic card here. We did get a Dirty Player Underworld Skaven Lineman, a Skaven Gutter Runner, which is a nice ball carrier, and a Wrestle Underworld Skaven Lineman, so it looks like we're shaping up a nice speedy CPP team here. We're down to zero coins in our bank. We have no more free player packs available. And that is going to be our initial set of cards. Where can we see these cards? Well, if you want to deal with things entirely within Discord, you can go to list requests up in this channel, type exclamation mark list, hit enter, and the Discord bot will PM you a list of the cards you own. However, there is a place with a much nicer UI that you can see all of your cards, sign up for tournaments, create your decks, look at the leaderboards, etc. So you'll probably be wanting to spend a lot of time on this place, and that is the Rebel Imperium website. If we head over to imperium.rebel.net, we can find our coach name in the side, it should by default take you here, and we can see our whole set of cards that we've already opened. So the cards that you own are broken up into a bunch of different types. Obviously there's the rarity, but we don't need to pay attention to that too much. For the most part, it's essentially just rarer cards are stronger but that's not always the case. I mean these types. So we have the player cards, which is just a list of players that you can add to your deck. So if you wanted to include a witch elf or a lineman or a halfling on your mixed team, you would need to put in one of the cards that say you can use those. These are representative of the players that you can put into your team. We have training cards. So for example, we have this fend card here, which would allow us to assign the fend skill to a player. And yes, I see, hear you questioning, but what about doubles? There are rules for that. You can assign a certain number of doubles to your team during team building, the full rules for which are in the rules document. We have special play cards like the Elf Turf card we just opened, which allow us to do manipulations to the tournament we're playing in without necessarily directly affecting our team. There are some other card types down here that unfortunately we don't really have any new ones of. We have reaction cards, which allow us to interact with some of the special play cards that people may or may not be using in the tournaments. Staff cards, which allow you to add things like rerolls and apothecaries and coaches. High command cards, which are new to season four and I won't get into now. And upgrade cards, which I also will not get into now. Another important thing to note is the card value. 
Each card has a particular value associated with it, and this is an internal balancing mechanic to Rebel Imperium. When you build a deck for a tournament, most of the tournaments will have a particular deck value limit, which will limit how much deck value you can include when building your deck. This is a way to make you make choices about what cards you include. How can we possibly make a team with only these cards, you might ask? There's not even 11 players here. Well, you may notice this toggle starter pack button up in the corner. I've switched it off. It should be on by default initially, but I just wanted to show you our card set. So if we turn this on, suddenly we'll gain many more cards. Lots of players. What these are, are just a set of linemen that you have a certain quantity of that have been calculated to let you build a full lineman team for any mixed team available. There's a reason for the quantity limits, and that is things like we don't want people to have full teams of dwarf linemen or Norse linemen initially when nobody has any block cards. But rest assured, there are enough players here, even if you open zero packs, to make a complete team for any of the mixed teams available. If we scroll down to the training cards, you may see there's a few cards tagged with preseason as a subtype. These cards are little bonuses you get at the very start of a season to help you build more competitive decks initially. So we can see that we have five preseason block cards. It's all basic stuff. We have block, dodge, guard, mighty blow, tackle. If we scroll down, you might notice some cards labeled with the preseason subtype. What are these other skills? I didn't open these. These are new for season four, aiming to give people a boost early in the season when they don't have any cards yet. It's all basic stuff like block and dodge, but those can be super helpful, especially early when you're using a lot of linemen. They are one use only, but they can give you a great start in your first few tournaments before you have your own block cards. You may notice they do have a quantity attached to them. So for example, here we have five preseason block cards. So you could give five players in your first deck block, or you could give two and save three for a later use. It's all up to you. It can give you a nice boost early on, but they are only one use, so use them wisely. We also have a special play card, the preseason skill pack, that is given to us as a preseason card. If I scroll down, you can see that we also have staff cards in our starter pack. These include things like the cheerleader squad, apothecaries, and rerolls. So even though you haven't opened yet, you can still include up to eight rerolls in your deck if you so desire. Uh, be aware that your cards, when committed to a tournament, are unavailable for use in other tournaments because you can do more than one at once. So you may not wish to use all eight rerolls in your first deck. Now, if I scroll all the way back up to the top, we'll look at some of the other tabs outside of our initial collection. We have the info tab, which is just going to tell us a log of the things that we've done. We've seen that we purchased our budget booster pack and used our two initial free player packs on the player chaotic player pack pack. That's a hard sentence to say. So we have zero bank and no free packs left. The next tab is dusting. This is how you can gain additional player packs, as I alluded to earlier. You can dust, as per Hearthstone or some other collectible card games, your cards and use them to gain new cards. So how this works, for player cards, you can add up to 10 cards that you don't want to keep using this system here. Once you've selected 10, you'll get a button up here that says confirm. And you can confirm that, and it'll remove the cards that you've added from your collection and give you a free player pack that you can then go generate like we did at the start. This is a way to focus particularly on one team if you'd really like to, or fish for that last extra card you'd really like to grab, or just get rid of a bunch of duplicates. Most people hold on to a lot of their cards initially to give themselves options for different teams that they'd like to play, but if you know that you're only going to have limited time and want to focus ultra hard on one particular mixed team, another valid strategy is to dust everything that doesn't come from that particular mixed team. You can do something similar with special play cards and training cards. You can add 10 of either of those, mixed and match how you like, to dust, which will allow you to open a training pack or a special play pack, which contains only training cards or only special play cards. We also have a stats tab, which will just tell you your record for the different seasons, which is nice if you like to track your stats. And the exciting bit is the achievements tab. Yes, we have achievements. They're just fun little challenges that you can do to help you earn some Imperium gold. Feel free to check them out and play for them, or ignore them and be surprised when sometimes you get extra gold. There might even be some secret hidden achievements. But they often include things like get some passing yards, get some running yards, 
do some surfs, do some blocks, win matches with particular mixed teams, and they often reward things like coins and booster packs. So they can be a nice little goal to aim for if you're looking for something to shoot for. There are a few other things you can do on the Imperium website. You can browse the collections of other coaches. For example, if we go find our friend Steak Mittens, we can see his achievements. We can see what cards he has access to this season, what their stats are, etc. Scope out the competition a little bit. You can also look at the leaderboard, which will show you who's currently doing well in various categories, such as collection value, people who've earned the most coins, most touchdowns, etc. Not, not much here so far, given that we haven't really played any tournaments this season yet, but it's fun to pay attention to. And lastly, the important one here is tournaments. This is where you're going to sign up and enter all of the tournaments that you participate in through the course of Rebel Imperium. There are several different types, and we can go over those a little bit now. First, this drop box will let you filter by region. Big O, G, Min, and Rel, as per our standard Rebel time zone distinctions, this is just so that you can ideally meet up with people who are likely to be willing to play games in the same time zone as you. I'm Rel, so I'll press that for now. We also have regular, fast track, and boot camp tournaments. These are about time limits. The regular tournament expects you to play three games over the course of three weeks. The fast track tournament expects you to play three games over the course of a weekend and the boot camp tournament expects you to play your three games over the course of a week. So whether you just have one free weekend or if you want to just stick in an extra game per week, there's a tournament available for you. Once you've selected the region and the type of tournament you'd like to play, you can press the sign up button to start the process. Well, let's sign up for a tournament, shall we? You can sign up for whichever one meets your needs based on the location and type that you'd like to participate in. However, for the sake of example, I'm going to sign up to a special one that's been made just for me, Stakes Fake Tournament down here. In order to sign up, you just press sign up. Perfect. One out of four signups, phase deck building. Once all four people have signed up to a particular tournament, it'll be started and assigned a channel in the Discord where you can discuss and deal with all the administration that comes with playing in a tournament. We also note that we now have the resign button if you signed up by mistake and didn't want to actually play in this tournament, and the my deck button, which is where we can start building our deck for this tournament. I'm going to press my deck and we get this deck builder. We've already decided that we're going to play the Chaotic Player Pact. So let's select that team up here that will filter our card list to the cards that are available in Chaotic Player Pact so it makes our lives a little bit easier. You'll enter a team name up here, which you want to have match your team name in client. That's just for the admins to make sure that your team in game matches your roster that you've built here. Now, what are these numbers and all these buttons and stuff? Well, we have deck zero out of 20. This is our deck limit. Every tournament will have a deck limit, which is just a limit of the number of cards you're allowed to put into it. We have a deck value. It says 0 out of 130, brackets 100. That's awful confusing. Three blessing points? What are these? Well, the deck value, the 0 here, is the value of the cards that we've put in total, so that we talked about the value before. 130 is the absolute maximum deck value that you're allowed to enter into the tournament. And this is a balancing mechanic, and that value will change depending on the type of tournament that you're entering. Some of them are unlimited, like the Imperium tournament at the end of the season. In brackets, we have 100 here. I'm going to back out of the screen for a second to show you what that's all about. So if I click on Stakes Fake Tournament here, we get some more details down below. You can see what mode it is. This is a boot camp tournament. And we have the Conclave range. Ooh. Well, the Conclave is the shadowy cabal behind the scenes of Imperium. They tell me they aren't just Herringsword and Thomas T. wearing cloaks, but I don't really believe them. But who am I to question the cabal? Their whims can give you blessings if they like your deck, or curses if they disapprove. Here we can see the deck ranges in which you will gain blessings or curses. It makes for some interesting decisions. Is it worth including that extra legendary player if it puts me into cursed territory? If I cut a skill, I could get a blessing. Hmm. 
but mostly we can see the ranges here. So if our deck value is between 0 and 79, we gain three blessing points. Blessing points are just something that we will use as part of the inducement phase when we get to that later. 80 to 89 is two blessing points, 90 to 99 is one blessing point, 100 is the equilibrium. This is the 100 deck limit that we saw when we were looking at the tournament. 130 is the maximum, but going over 100 might not be the best choice given that we might get curses put into our deck as part of this process. Curses, generally bad. Blessings, generally good. So let's go back into building this deck. Well, we need to include 11 players. We have a bunch of skills that we can choose from. We have our Elf Turf. We have a whole lot of uh, re-rolls and apothecaries and stuff. I think I'm just going to start. We're going to put an apothecary, and we'll put in three re-rolls. That's generally the basics of any team, but feel free to play around with this if you want. Clicking on those puts them into our deck up here and our staff cards. We've used four of our 20 cards so far. We have a deck value of 12, adding up these, these points here. Let's use our best cards, shall we? I'm going to include that Mighty Blow Witch Elf. I think she's going to be very handy in this game. Dirty Player is probably useful, I think. I would like to take him. Gutter Runners are always very handy, so we'll add him in there. Skaven Blitzer is nice to have another blitzing option. Free Shorehands is nice, especially when we don't have any other cards. And maybe we can have a Wrestle Piece as our uh, safety. We have multiple Blitzers here, but mostly I think I'm just taking the Skaven Blitzer here because we get block. Assigning block to the Mighty Blue Witch Elf will probably end up being our main Blitzing threat. We still need to fill out the roster, so let's try to get up to about 11 cards for now. We have a few Dark Elf Linemen, some Skaven Linemen, some Chaos Beastmen, and the Underworld Goblins that we can fill up our roster with. I think I'm going to stick with... Let's get some Dark Elf Linemen in there. They're pretty good. The Agi 4 is nice to have. The Armor 8 is nice to have. We still have... We're up to 9 cards, so we still need 2 more. And I'd like to have some Linos. People that I can just put on the LOS and not be upset about it. Skaven Linemen are faster. Chaos Beastmen have a little bit more armor. I think I'm going to take 3 Chaos Beastmen. Normally, I would probably like to use them as maybe Blitzers, given that they have horns. But... I think they're going to be my LOS duty players here, given that they're armor 8, and this way I don't expose my elves, and we can use my Mighty Blow Dark Elf Witch Elf as my main blitzer, with the Skaven Blitzer and the Wrestle Piece as my backups. This will put us at 12 players, which is, I think, a good bench. One bench is always nice to have, so maybe we should add some skills now. The only skill we actually opened in our, in our pack is Fend, and we could apply that to somebody, but I don't know if I really want to use Fend here. I definitely want to attach block to that witch elf, so let's do that. So I'll put block in my deck, and scroll down to training cards, select player, and assign it to the mighty blow witch elf. If we scroll back up, we can see that that witch elf has block. I think it would also be nice to give that witch elf tackle just to make her a threat on the pitch. So let's assign a tackle as well. There is also a doubles limit here. You can assign skills to players that they normally would require doubles for, but there's a limit to the number of doubles you can assign. That should be all laid out in the rules for you, but we can show an example here. A guard would be a double for that witch elf, so if we put guard in our deck and assign it to the witch elf, scroll back up, we can see that we've added one double to our deck. The deck builder should yell at you if you add too many, but make sure you read the rules to check out what the rules are around this. I don't think guard on the witch elf is going to be particularly useful, so I'm going to keep that out for now. I think perhaps adding tackle to our wrestle lineman is another good option here, so I'm going to include another preseason tackle. This is burning through my preseason tackle cards, so I don't know if I want to use too many of these so that I have options in later tournaments. I think the gutter runner is going to be one of our big scoring threats, so let's give him block as well. A blodge player is certainly annoying, especially when your opponents don't have a whole lot of tackle available. We could continue to assign block to players. These beastmen could probably get away with block, but we don't want to use all of our block cards, I think, in case we want to play another tournament later. We're also at our 20 card deck limit, so this is where we need to decide on a few things. Our deck value is only 77, which hasn't reached the 100 yet, but 
we don't really have a whole lot we can do to add much more deck value to this because we just don't have very high value cards right now we could cut some we could cut a player go down to 11 maybe add some more skills we could put another dark elf witch elf in there and change what skills we're assigning in places maybe cut a reroll there are a couple options another thing we could consider is adding a preseason skill pack this is a pretty useful special play card in that it will open an inducement coaching pack which will contain a set number of skills and then we can apply all of the skills to players on our team we do only get to use this once as it is a preseason card but it's a fairly useful one. It's worth noting that the first special play card you include is free, so we can include this inducement pack easily anyway. Let's take the block away from the gutter runner. If he scores, he's going to be scoring right away and probably doesn't need to worry about the block too much. We'll add a preseason skill pack in there, just so we can have some fun. Maybe get some nice skills. Another thing I would consider is probably putting guard in here somewhere, given that we have a frenzy witch elf. It's going to be easy to frenzy trap herself if we don't have guard assists, but... We just don't have the deck to really include very many. This is a choice you have to make when building Imperium decks. Hmm, perhaps we should include one. Let's take a guard. And we can put that guard like, on a Dark Elf lineman. He doesn't have block, but we can dodge in places and maybe use that to help us get frenzy hits with our witch. And that is our, our 20 card limit deck. Our value is now 83, so we're down to two blessing points but that's the decision we made by adding in the guard in the special play pack. We've only got one double, so we should be okay here. Got all our skills assigned down here. Something else to note in the deck builder here is we have a few extra little buttons we can push. There's the sponsor and extra cards section. This will allow us to add cards to our deck that we don't actually own. In the case where inducements or uh, this tournament sponsors cause us to add cards. Most tournaments will have a random sponsor, which will give you bonuses for doing things like getting more injuries or getting the most passes, etc., and will often provide you cards to put in your deck that will help meet the sponsor goal. Sometimes also inducements, or for example, the special play card we played will give us cards that we can add to our deck as well. So this is how you would do that. You would come in here, and type the card that you want to add, and it'll add a temporary card just for this tournament. And the high command is a special thing that's been added to season four. So now all we have to do is wait. Once two other coaches have signed up, we'll get a tournament admin assigned, one of the lovely volunteers that make this such a great experience for everyone involved. A channel will be assigned for us to coordinate in the Discord. And we'll also get a button under my deck up here to confirm the deck once we're sure that we've added all the cards we like. Then we'll move on to the inducement phase, and that will all be taken care of inside of the Discord channel. See you there. We've waited a while, and now we have four signups for a tournament. A channel has been assigned in the Discord, and in the Discord we've even gotten a notification with that new channel. Handy dandy bot. So if we go to the channel that we've been assigned, we see the, the start of the tournament here. So Herringzord, Zinge, Cornite, and myself have all signed up for this tournament. We all need to go through and submit our decks. I've already pre-built mine, so we'll go do that quickly after this. It's just giving us the rules again, as we saw before. We can see our deck size, the conclave ranges. Sometimes here, you'll see a tournament sponsor. For this one, we don't have a sponsor, but be aware that is a possibility. There are also no special rules or banned cards, and if there were, they would be mentioned here. Those mostly show up for Imperium tournaments rather than regular tournaments. So, if we go back to our website, hit my deck, we now have a commit button in the top right. If we're happy with our deck and we don't want to make any more additions, we can press commit and that is going to lock in our deck for this tournament that we've signed up for. I'm pretty happy with mine, so I'm going to hit commit. Our deck is now committed. All we have to do now is wait for everybody else. They all have to go through and do the same process to make sure that everybody's ready to go. If we go back to the channel, if you're looking to see who you're still waiting on, you can always do the exclamation mark left command, and it'll tell you who hasn't committed or built their deck yet. So we can get on Zinger or Cornet if we really want to, but let's be nice. Everybody has different schedules, so we can wait for them to finish up, and then we'll move on to the next step. Everybody has finished committing their deck, it seems, now that everybody has finished. So I think we're ready to move on to the next phase. If I go check out 
the tournaments that we've signed up for, we can see the different decks that are committed now. We can scope out our opponents. Most of these uh, fine people are just making example decks so that we can get through this rather than anything very serious. So their teams might not be the most important or most well-designed ones, but we can take a look at what we've got here. Herringzord having gone for a chaotic player pack team with some mutations. Core Knight has Mickey Claw, a very fancy werewolf, along with some skeletons and zombies. And Zinge, another couple unique cards, Harder, Better, Faster, Trolliver, and Vine Helsing. And a fancy Minotaur and a fancy Troll, along with some other players. And we can check out their deck values here, if they'll be getting any blessing points, and that sort of thing. Now, once an admin for the tournament notices that everybody has committed their decks and we're good to go, they will roll us over to the next phase of the game, which we should get a notification for in Discord when it has been completed, which we have. An Imperium bot is now going to tell us that we're ready to enter the special play phase. So we can check out a little summary of everybody's deck. Cornite's deck has a value of 53, Herringzord's has 66, ours is 83, and Zinge's is 95. So this is how we interact with the inducements in Imperium, which I'll get into in a minute. We also get to see what the special play cards are. Cornite has played What a Good Idea. This card is an exact duplicate of the previous special play card played in this tournament. Unfortunately for him, he was the first card played, so that's not going to affect anything. Herringzord has played Collared, so Herringzord is going to target a player in the tournament, and that player is going to receive a broken collarbone injury for the duration of the tournament. So you can see how the special play cards can influence not only your own deck, but also your opponents. I've played my preseason skill pack, so during the inducement phase, I get to open one inducement coaching pack and apply all the skills to players on your team. And then, since that was a preseason card, it'll be removed from my collection after using it. Zinch has also played Heed the Call. Select one of ten Imperium Assassins and add them to your roster for the tournament. A very exciting card. Uh, there is a list of Imperium Assassins that you'll be able to find through the Discord for this particular card. But there is a special play almanac that I will link in the description below that gives you a description of all of the relevant special play cards and where you can find out information about them. Zinj has also played Lock Bank, so he can choose to reduce the amount of inducement cash that we would get in the standard Blood Bowl client once the games have started for particular teams that he chooses to do so. These should all be resolved in order. So the first thing that needs to happen is Cornite's card, but it doesn't affect anything. Next, we need to wait for Herringzord to choose his player that he wishes to target a broken collarbone on. Sometimes the orders don't matter very much and in, in that a special play card won't affect the results of another and then you can do them out of order but strictly according to the rules they should be in order this way and since Herringzord could choose one of my players I should probably wait to roll my preseason skill pack to see what players I need to assign it to. However, Zinj could just select his assassin probably at any point because none of the previous special play cards will affect the assassin he chooses along with Zinja's lock bank but he does have the option to wait to see what happens with the other special play cards if he so chooses once this is done we'll move on to the inducement phase we can see that Cornite has entered the exclamation mark done command to signify that he is finished with his special play phase given that his special play card doesn't do anything here so he just selects to end his phase. Herringzord then chooses to use Colored on Zinja's Trolliver, selecting the troll that we saw earlier in the deck building to receive a broken collarbone injury. Herringzord then confirming that with exclamation mark done. Next would be our special play card. However, our special play card lists during the inducement phase, open one inducement coaching pack and apply to all, all skills to players on your team. So we will not be opening that right now. That will happen in the inducement phase. So we need to wait for Zinj to play Heed the Call before we move on here. So all I need to do is enter the exclamation mark done command while we wait for the rest of the players. Zinj has now selected his special play cards, is taking a Boba Fett as the Imperium Assassin, which you could see from the special play almanac what his options were. 
and then putting all of his locked bank on Herringzord in revenge for the smashed collarbone that Herringzord sent his way. This is why the order matters. Sometimes it might influence what decisions you make. So Zinch then enters exclamation mark done as well, and we move on to the inducement phase. So you can see this is where we get inducement points to try to even out the deck values of things. Cornite gets 47, Herringzord gets 34, I get 17, and Zinj gets 5. This is to bring us all up to the 100 deck value target that we had as part of the tournament rules. These can be done in any order, so we can go and browse our inducement choices in a little bit. First, we have our inducement pack that we in added as part of our special play that we can go back and check out. I have already rolled this, you can see it here. So let's go to add those to our deck now. Note the card names. That is very important. Strength up, dodge, mighty blow. Because if we go to our website, back to the Rebel Imperium website, and we open up my deck, we can go to sponsor and extra cards, because this is where we're going to add the new cards that we just opened. So if I type strength up, note that it has an exclamation point, as that's the card name. We add that, and we should get strength up. We've also added Dodge and Mighty Blow. So Dodge and Mighty Blow. So you'll note that if we go back to my deck, we can see these cards being added to our deck already. They have a little plus next to them, which indicates that they're from this temporary pack. So they only exist here. They're not part of our collection. And they also don't add anything to our deck value or our deck limit. So we can choose who we want to give this to. Well, given that we were worried about our witch getting frenzy trapped, let's just give that right away to the witch. What a beautiful blitzer. We also have a dodge and a mighty blow. Where do we want to assign those? Well, given that we have the underworld skaven blitzer as one of our main blitzing threats, perhaps we should add a mighty blow there. We'll add that to our skaven blitzer. Then we have a dodge. Well, we've got this dark elf lineman with guard. So why don't we make that lineman a little bit more reliable and give him guard as well, or give him dodge as well. You can tell which lineman you're applying it to because of the numbers. So 10 Dark Elf linemen, 10 Dark Elf linemen. So we should see the same scale applied to both players. If I was Zinj and needed to apply the collared injury to one of my players, if Herringsword had chosen me, for example, you can do that here through the Add Injury button and add the minus strength here. But we don't have to, because we were not targeted. So we've added these skills to our deck. Here we have the Google Sheet that is listing all of the deck inducements available for Rebel Imperium. Once again, linked in the handy dandy description below. We can see the cost of all of these inducements and what they do here. This thing off to the side is just telling us what races are available for that particular inducement. The reason for this is a lot of them are star players, so, you know, we can only induce Chaos or Dark Elf or Skaven or Underworld players. So let's go take a look at what we have. We've been given 17 points of inducements. So we could do something like a second inducement skill pack, another inducement and coaching pack. We could pick up a positional pack if we wanted to add more players. Special play pack would allow us to play another special play card. And also look at some of the uh, star players available. So what star players do we have for the Chaotic Player Pact? Well, that's 17 points right there. That seems like a good option for me. We could, that's the perfect amount of inducements. We can induce Scythonator the second, Chaos Warrior with Block Claw and Stand Firm. So why don't we go ahead and take Scythonator too, because that's an easy inducement to take. But here we would have had 17 points to play with, so we could have taken something like Screer von Kratzich, and then an inducement player pack, for example. There's a lot of things you can play with here, but let's take Scythonator too. So we'll go to back to our my deck here, and we'll do our the same thing we did before, where we go to the sponsor and extra cards, and we're going to add Scythonator two to our deck. There we did. There we go. We've got the inducement Scythonator two added to our deck list. So what is that other thing that we had? Blessings and inducement points. We can see that Cornite was going for his blessings here, but let's just do our own. 
So we've been given two blessing points. So what we can do there is either generate two level one blessings or one level two blessing. You can get up to three blessing points. So let's just go ahead and do a blessing two. So we have two options here. We can either get the blessing of speed or the blessing of strength. The blessing of speed will let us target two linemen on our roster and upgrade them to any legal positional type with natural movement allowance of up to two more than the linemen. Or we could do the same thing but for strength. Target one lineman on our roster, upgrade it to any legal positional type with natural strength of up to two more than the lineman. So why don't we go look at our deck. What lineman do we have? Well, we have the Skaven lineman, so we could up upgrade the Skaven lineman to a gutter runner because the gutter runner is the same movement or faster. Same thing with a blitzer. We could take any of these Chaos Beastmen and upgrade them to Chaos Warriors with the Blessing of Strength, but we couldn't upgrade them with the Blessing of Speed because the Chaos Warriors are slower than the Beastmen. What I think I'd like to do is take some of these linemen and make them Blitzers, because that's just a free and easy way to get block for us. And since the Dark Elf Blitzers are the same movement as the Dark Elf linemen, we are fully within the Blessing of Speed's description. So we can upgrade them to any legal positional type with natural movement of up to two more than the linemen. So I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to make a comment and say Blessing of Speed Upgrading Guard Lineman to Blitzer and other Dark Elf Lineman to Blitzer. Now, if we want to be very accurate about what we're doing here, we could go into our sponsors and extra cards and add a Dark Elf Blitzer. And we can even just clone that Dark Elf Blitzer to get a second one in there to make that easier. This way we can add the Dark Elf Blitzers to our deck in the list here, as we can see here. And we can then go to the linemen that we're going to get rid of or we're upgrading, and we can press, we can hover over this and disable them. This way the admin still knows that they were included in our deck, and they were the ones that were upgraded to these Dark Elf Blitzers here. And we can see that we had those skills unassigned here. So we can go in and assign them to the Dark Elf Blitzer that we upgraded our linemen to. Make sure that you add them to the same player that should be getting them. So this is our, our deck now that we've done inducements. So what we're going to do is we go back into the Discord, and we're going to just tell all our opponents what we've done, just to be sportsmanlike. And then we can enter done, because we are done with our inducements and our blessings. Here we are in the Blood Bowl client. We are on my Stake Mittens account rather than the Imperium Coach one, just because it was easier for me to log in. But what we do here is we just go to the Create Mixed Team, and here you can choose which mix team that you wanted to play. So we had selected Chaotic Player Pact. So we'll select the Chaotic Player Pact and press next. Here you need to enter the same team name that you entered in your deck building. So if we go back to our deck here, we can see that I named it Imperium Deck. So this needs to be called Imperium deck. Feel free to enter whatever motto you want. And make your selection about armor and icon. We also need to check the custom team button so that we can assign the skills the way we want to. Once again, you can pick a stadium, enter whichever stadium name you like. We do not want an automatic choice of roster because we would like to build it ourselves. You can flick through the different races with these little arrows here and that'll allow us to build your team. So let's make that Witch Elf that we're building our team around, shall we? So let's select a Witch Elf. You can name the Witch Elf whatever you want. I generally like to name or the players after whatever skills they have so that it's easier for me to check my roster versus the team that I've built in game. So for example, this is a Mighty Blow Witch Elf. So normally I would do something like this and name name the Witch Elf Mighty Blow Witch. 
just so that way when I'm comparing the rosters, I can easily tell what skills they're missing or if they need any. But you can name them however you want. This is just something I do for organization reasons. So let's buy that witch. We'll confirm the purchases for now. You can also come back and do this later if you want to make adjustments. So you could select zero here, but I know I'm getting three rerolls and one apothecary based on my cards, so I might as well just grab them now. It's also easy to continue to buy and edit players from this screen. So we know that this is supposed to be a Mighty Blow Witch Elf, so let's click on her, level up, Strength, Mighty Blow. Witch Elf has Mighty Blow. What other skills does that witch have? Well, she should also have Block, Tackle, and Plus Strength, so let's add those as well. Block, Tackle, and for the plus strength, you need to press the characteristic button up here to choose the increased strength skill. And there's our first Witch Elf. I'm going to go through and do the rest of these players in the same way, just so that we can see the team in its completion. And there we go. Now our team is ready to play. We've done everything that we're required to do, and all we have to do is wait for our opponents to finish their inducements, and then the tournament will be ready to go. We can see that everybody has finished the special play phase, the inducement phase, and the conclave blessings and curses. So we're good to start our tournament. That's about it. All that's left now is to go play. Talk to your opponents in this channel that's made for the tournament in this Discord and find a time that works for you. The tournaments are all set up as ladders for ease of matchmaking. So all you have to do is go into the client and press find a game on your created team at roughly the same time as your opponent and within a few minutes, you should be blood bowling. Once an admin gets around to this, they will confirm the phase and it'll automatically send out tickets to everybody that you can then accept and start playing games in that ladder system. Depending on your results in the tournament you've just set up, you'll earn Imperium Gold. You'll be able to use that to buy more booster packs, gain more cards, and continue progressing through Imperium. Don't forget about the achievements. You're now free to go and sign up for more tournaments if you'd like. There are some rules about which type of tournaments you can enter at the same time, but you did read the rules, didn't you? I really hope this was helpful. I'm excited to see you and any other new coaches on the pitch playing Rebel Imperium with me. I've been Stakemittens, and I hope you enjoy Imperium.